Welcome to the Songwriter Connection Podcast, where we look at the craft of songwriting through the eyes of a songwriter. Each week, we make a connection with a music maker, listen to their songs, and hear their stories. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. Well, thanks again for listening. We appreciate the download. And what do you know? This is season three. We're episode 23 already. And as I mentioned in the past recently, we're just going to keep going with with season three. When I started this thing back during COVID, we were, you know, I, I wasn't new to podcasting and uh, I wasn't sure how to do this thing. And uh, so we, I've seen other podcasts go season. So I thought, well, I'll do that. And, uh, but season three comes around and I decided, you know, what the heck, just keep it going. And I work far enough advanced so that I can work my own little vacations and stuff in. So it's kind of cool. I just love doing it. It's a labor of love. And we thank you for listening and spreading the word around. Um, let me tell you, I, I want to thank our sponsor locally right away, which is my friend Mark Allen Barnett. I got a chance to play with him downtown on Sunday. Um, we're, we're, we're taping this, by the way, July the 12th for an August 24th podcast release. And we release every Wednesday morning, so very early in the morning, so when you get up, you have a cup of coffee and make the connection. So, But Mark and I played Sunday morning, of all places, down on Broadway at the Whiskey Bent, and we had a wonderful time. Mark is a great songwriter. He's had cuts by Shelby Lynn and David Ball and John Barry and, and others, and he's just a great music mentor. He's been doing this a long time, and I remember... When I was an NSAI coordinator, even before, when I was just a member of NSAI up in Cincinnati, Mark would come on and put, um, he put these seminars together and taught us so much and took such an interest. And I've been a big fan and friend of his ever since. And uh, he would travel all over putting on these NSAI songwriter uh, little instruction um, uh, seminars. And I mean, from California to Michigan and Wisconsin to Ohio and here in Nashville these days, he's inviting you. To come to town. He does the Mark Allen Barnett tours, and these are really incredible tours. He can do so much more when you come in on a tour because he can take you around and introduce you to industry professionals and other songwriters so that you can network. He can get you on stage performing. He can write with you, help you develop the craft of songwriting. And I can't tell you how much I've learned from Mark over the years, and you can too. Um, I, 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 Mark always says, you don't choose music, music chooses you. And you're going to find out why when you meet Mark. He's quite a dynamic person. Find him at com. Allen is A-L-A-N and Barnett is Barn with E-T-T-E at the end. Uh, also find him on Facebook and stuff. And when you come to town, book one of those tours, you will not be disappointed. Well, we have um, over 60 episodes out there right now, and um, hopefully you've listened to all of them. If not, go back, because there's some really great episodes. And I'll tell you my favorite ones. I started in country radio um, back in uh, 1980, so that's how I'm dating myself. That's how long it's it's been. Um, But some of my favorite episodes were episodes where we talked with country royalty about about the history. I'm so into the history. If you listen to my radio shows, I always leave a, a section for, for history uh, at the very end of the shows. Well, so some of my favorite episodes, if you haven't heard Trey Ackerman's yet, Trey Ackerman's daddy was Willie Ackerman, who was the Hee Haw drummer and a great studio drummer. He's in the uh, Musicians Hall of Fame. And Trey and I just sat here over some bourbons and talked about country history and he shared some amazing stories. So check that out. I think that's season one, episode 14. We had Jenny, uh, Eddie Jenny, Jennings, whose who's mom was, is Jesse Coulter. Jenny's a really dear friend of mine. Uh, her dad, uh, Dwayne Eddy, and her bonus dad, the guy who raised her, was Waylon Jennings. And I'll tell you what, to this day, that's the most listened to podcast that we've had on YouTube alone. 7,000 streams, I think. Uh, so that's not counting the other places. We're everywhere, by the way, everywhere you find podcasts. So uh, today... I am so excited because we've got more country royalty uh, with us today. It's Tess Frizzell. Hi, Tess. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you for having me. I'm just sitting here wondering, wow, I got to go back and listen to that and see what it was like to be raised by Waylon (laughs) Jennings. I know. It's it's fascinating. You need to listen to it. Wow, I will. And she's a wonderful, wonderful person. And I find out we're kind of neighbors, huh? I know. I'm just down the street. It's a a small world. It is Uh in Nashville. You just never know. I found out quite recently um, a producer with a great studio in his home is a stone's throw from here. In fact, he's going to produce my next project. We're going to start talking about it tomorrow. Yeah, that does not surprise me. Nashville is the town of 
everyone you meet is is yeah. into music. They're a plumber, but they also have a studio. Yeah, that's <laughs> you true. Know? <laughs> you know, or a carpenter or something. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> a drummer, carpenter. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about you. If people are saying Tess Frizzell, that, that name sounds familiar. Well, it should sound familiar because let's start with your uncle, uh, Lefty. Yeah. Who uh, is in not only the Country Music Hall of Fame, but the Songwriter Hall of Fame, too. An amazing songwriter. That guy influenced so many country stars after him. People like George Jones, mm-hmm. uh, Merle Haggard. Yeah. Um, uh, it, the list goes on and on and on. Everybody loved yeah. Lefty. Right. Um, and then his brothers were also pretty famous. Your dad, Alan. Yeah. Uh, David Frizzell, who did a great song with your mom, Shelley West. Yes. You're the reason God made Oklahoma. Right. Big award-winning <laughs> song. Yeah. And so that brings us to the west side of the family. Oh, yeah, your mom, your grandma is also in the Country Hall of Fame. Right. Inducted in 2018. And yes. I'll tell you what, when I started in 1980, all us young DJs were in love with your grandma. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. And then Shelley came along. We were all in love with her, too. <laughs> You know, in my career, I never had the opportunity to meet Dottie or Shelly, but oh. what a pleasure it is to meet you. Well, thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. I think you've about covered it. <laughs> it's a lot of family tree. Did I leave anyone out? <laughs> no, I've heard, who was it that said, you know, that's not a family tree, it's a forest. <laughs> <laughs> that's about right, huh? It is about right. Yeah. And you grew up in it and around it. And yeah. I thought, you know what, the, one of the coolest stories I heard in researching you um, is your first appearance on TV. <laughs> Yes, Which is also yes. the first time your grandma got to see you, right? <laughs> I know. This this story alone tells you how crazy my childhood was. If you only heard this story, you would know. <laughs> so uh, my mom, like you said, Shelly West, and my uncle David Frizzell, they made up Frizzell and West. Uh-huh. And uh, they were nominated for Duo of the Year for the ACM Awards. Uh-huh. And only problem was my mom was stuck back in Nashville giving birth to me. <laughs> So she missed it, but my grandmother happened to be hosting the award show that year, I and so that. she was missing, you know, the birth of her first grandchild. And Dick Clark, who was producing the show, has this idea to send a film crew to Baptist Hospital in Nashville. My mom's literally just given birth, oh <laughs> and literally sends the film crew in there. I'm a day old, and and she's <sighs> holding me with my dad and introduces me and everything. And so then the next day. By the time I'm two days old, it airs. And Mickey Gilly. Mickey Gilly. And Conway Twitty. I know. We just Bless lost them both. Mickey. I know. But we've lost all of them now. I can't believe the legends mm. we've lost. But so they're standing there with my grandmother about to present an award on the ACM Awards. And, and Mickey Gilly says, you know, would you like to see your granddaughter? I heard that you just became a grandmother, but you, you missed the birth, you know. And But would you like to, to see her? And she, and she had like, no clue this was no, going to happen, right? she has no idea. Uh-huh. And then they bring up the video of mom. And she's basically falling apart. Mm. <laughs> <On> television, <laughs> national television. I'm yeah. two days old, and that was my first television <laughs> appearance. Two days old, your first TV. That's right. ACM That's right. Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with all the paparazzi, right. you know. Oh, gosh. And it's even funnier, too, because mom and and David end up later in the award show winning, winning duo yeah. of the year. So David gets up and, oh. you know, David's the real, he was always great at, at the business part. And he's thanking, and Snuffy Garrett, I want to thank, you know. And then my grandmother gets up to, to say thanks on behalf of my mom. And she just goes, isn't my granddaughter so pretty? <laughs> 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 oh, that is such a cool story. Yeah, you know your grandma was such a. Maybe people don't. They remember Dottie West is an amazing performer, and mm-hmm. but maybe with a lot of people, songwriters don't get a lot of credit. But right. your grandmother was a great, yes. great, and very prolific songwriter, yes. wasn't she? Yes, absolutely. You know she. Oh, she loved songwriting. That was a huge. Um, part of her and and even though as you say a lot of times people don't think of that part of her career you know the very first song that she won the grammy for which actually made her the first female in country music to win a grammy was a song that she co-wrote with my granddad here comes my baby and so she was a songwriter at heart i mean at her house it was not unheard of to they would come home off the road Mm -hmm. open the door 
And it was like a free for all at her house. And it would be this. This is the quote from Larry Gatlin. We'd walk in and Willie Nelson would be cooking eggs in the kitchen. <laughs> Roger Miller asleep on the couch and Chris Christopherson asleep on the floor. Oh, my. <laughs> so it was like the songwriter's haven there. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. That's really how she learned how to songwrite. Really? Is she Hanging would have yes. Yeah. She would have all of these, you know, you got Roger Miller in there mm-hmm. One of the writing ever. songs. Yeah. And she's cooking for them, but she's listening to how to write a song. Mm-hmm. And that's how she learned. It's, yeah, just mm-hmm. kind of rubs off. Yeah. That's amazing. And she had she left behind notebooks of songs and song ideas and hooks. And I remember talking to, to Jeannie Seeley uh, on a past yes. podcast and, yes. and her and Bobby Tomerlin and uh, Steve Warner yes. got together and took one of those songs, wrote mm-hmm. it, you yep. know, yep. finished it, put it on uh, Jeannie's uh, record. That's and, right. And now your new record, yes. kind of the same thing. You yes. actually co-wrote a song with Grandma. I know. I cannot even believe it. It still feels totally surreal to me. Yeah. Yeah. There's these yellow notepads with her beautiful handwriting where she just now these are from the 1960s and she just you know anytime she had a song idea sometimes it's a few lines sometimes just a hook or a title and uh and so the first time this idea was used was a, a few years ago and Bobby Tomberlin um, and Steve Warner finished it and then Jeannie who was one of her best friends cuts yes. it mm-hmm. and everyone was like That was magical. (laughs) Really? (laughs) You know, let's do it again. And so Bobby went through the notebooks and he comes across a couple lines and this title and says, I think this is the one. So we go to write it and it was just crazy. We actually went down to Muscle Shoals. You know, I know, I know. I mean, that alone, just the atmosphere, you know, songwriting, I feel like is so inspired by mm-hmm. atmosphere i agree with you and so 100%. sometimes you have to get the heck out of nashville <laughs> sometimes you do <laughs> to write a great song yeah isn't that funny isn't it funny? so yeah. we go down to muscle shoals and it's just steeped in music history there it, down it's there, so you know? inspirational they say it's yes. all about the water it there, and right? it's yeah. really it's some sort of weird yeah. stuff they've got going down <laughs> yeah. there i don't know yeah. so we go in wishbone studios where you know uh, Hank Jr. cut family tradition in this, Isn't in that this studio. Yeah, I know. I mean, That's kind of like the motto of my life, I feel like. <laughs> I know. So yeah. so we're sitting in this studio with Billy Lawson, and we finish writing this song. And I'm about to go in and, and kind of, you know, put some of it down. And we finish writing it together. And we had, you know how it is on pandemic time. You don't even mm. know what the date is. No. And we had, we had rescheduled it a couple times. And we just finished writing it. And I looked down at my phone and I said, oh, my gosh. It is the date that my grandmother passed away. Oh, man. And here she is all these years later. And she has a brand new song, brand new music that I'm a part of. How about that? I mean, it just gave me goosebumps all I, over. I got them right now. It is yeah. really the magic of music. I mean, really music is. just lives on forever, you know? It, it really and so mm-hmm. even though she's not here, she gets to live on in music. And I'm just honored to get to be a part of it. What a special uh, person she was. And that was early September that we lost. It was 91, yes. was it? Yes. We were working, I was working in Cincinnati Radio at the time. And just yeah. such a tragic loss. Oh, so. yes. For people who don't know, she... Died in a tragic car accident, actually, on the way to perform on the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. So. Running a little late. And the story I always heard that when the ambulance crew and everything got there, her injuries were internal. And right. she said, don't help me, help the guy. Yes. Help the gentleman who was driving. That's right. He was and an older gentleman. She assumed he was hurt worse. And she had them take him first. No one really knew the extent of her injuries. But that yeah. was definitely her heart. Amazing. Yeah. Do you have memories of her? How old? Oh, you? gosh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was almost 10 when almost she 10? died. Oh, and I have so some hard. great memories with her. She just, you know, spoiled the heck out of me, really. <laughs> <laughs> she should have. Yeah. That's a grandma's she dough. Was, she was very, very special. Wow. Should we play this song? Let's do it. I'm telling you, I love this song and I want folks to hear it. Uh, this is Tess Frizzell's song she wrote with her. Uh, her grandma and Bobby Timber- Tomberlin. Um, anybody else on that? And Billy Lawson. Billy Lawson. He, he chimed right, in. The, the studio. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is called The Wrong One on the Songwriter Connection Podcast. It's not easy to smile when you've been crying and pretend like 
everything's okay when inside you're dying. It's so hard to feel love when you're lonesome. Things will never feel right when you're with the wrong. Steals away all of the dreams of a love that really matters. We're both gonna come up short in the long run. But things will never feel right when you're with the song i love that thank you do you know i hear i mean you are definitely your own personal thing but i i hear a touch of your mom and your grandma in that wow in hearing that song wow yeah. well i will take that as a compliment and Absolutely. i've i've heard that a lot lately and it's Have really you? funny because i don't hear it when i'm singing but every once in a while when i hear the playback of a song i'll say well, there's mom <laughs> randomly on that line yeah so it's funny how you genetics it work then. yeah yeah it is kind of funny yeah. So <laughs> there's a question I want to ask you. All of that, the, the forest, right? The yes. uh, family forest. <laughs> um, did you feel any pressure going into the studio doing doing this kind of a project? Oh, gosh. The, press, the pressure question. Yeah. You, know, you probably get that a billion times. Well, and if you've talked to anybody who hmm. has a similar um, situation that I do when they come from a, yeah. you know, a family like this, it's everyone says, you know, a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. It kind of opens doors and then it shines a harsher spotlight and yeah. you're instantly compared. And so, absolutely. but you know, I think you have to get to a point where you just let all of that go. And if you really love it, then you cannot let go of music. I mean, mm -hmm. if you really love it, it's just a part of you and you have to learn to just be yourself and, you know, and love it. And then people will either love you for who you are yeah. or not. And you have to be okay with that, you know, but that's a hard, I don't care if you've got, you've come from a famous family or not. I mean, that's a hard thing to deal with. Oh yeah. You, you have to be you and you have to figure out who that is. And yes. And you have to get to that point where, well, it is what it is. Yes, you know, this is definitely. me, you know, right. you're either going to like it or, or you're not. Right. Right. Hopefully right. they're gonna like it. But it is definitely a weird <laughs> situation to be in. I think that, you know, if anything, sometimes I put pressure on myself just because, you know, I really want to do the absolute best that I can. Yeah. And you don't want to like embarrass your family or anything, you know. <laughs> oh, but uh but no, it's definitely it's such a supportive family yeah. and you know, I think you, what's interesting is I didn't really feel a lot of um, pressure when it came to just the singing part. 
as to whether to do it or not do it or, you know, will I do okay? Will I be good enough? But the songwriting, I did, which yeah. is really interesting. Well, this is the songwriter connection. Yes, so let's and that's why let's that. dive into that a little bit. Yes. I've really, <laughs> I've taken this apart in my mind a few times. And, yeah. you know, with singing, I think it just comes so naturally to me that I'm mm. not, I'm not trying to be anyone or, you know, I'm, it's just very natural. Whereas with the songwriting, even though it comes naturally to me, I actually went to Belmont. Creative writing was my my uh, study Good there. Study. But mm-hmm. what's interesting is when you get into songwriting, it can really be tempting to overthink. Yes, or so I true. don't do that with singing, you know, but mm-hmm. with writing, oh, I start overthinking. <laughs> and then you, you know, you really, you have this history of my grandmother winning that first Grammy as a female for a song she wrote or lefty. I mean, gosh, just one of the songs he wrote was a number one hit for Merle Haggard and And, Johnny Rodriguez. That's the way love goes. goes. So there's a lot of great Great songs uh, written. He wrote, if you got the money, I got the time. A lot of people think Willie wrote that, but no, no, he was quite the writer. Oh, and the ones he did with Whitey Schaefer. Oh yeah. Oh, some of my favorites. Classic stuff. So I was so intimidated by songwriting and overthinking it that I really stayed away from it. I just, yeah, Yeah. I really did. And I really didn't start writing until I guess really like a couple of years ago. And Mm. this is so interesting. Um, Bobby Tomberlin, who was a co-writer on this and Bobby, if you're listening, I want you on this show. Yeah. I know I will see you. uh, Well, this is in August, but he's playing at the, uh, uh, the Gatlinburg Songwriter Festival. Oh, yes. Around. Yes, yes, yes. yes. going to be there, so I'll get oh, him up there. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. We'll, 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 we'll sneak him up. Oh, good. Oh, he's amazing. For anyone that doesn't know he's a amazing. little bit of yeah. his resume, he had a number one hit by Diamond Rio, One More mm-hmm. Day. Great song. So mm. many cuts. I don't I don't yeah. know if there's anyone left in this town that hasn't <laughs> cut a song. He has a, Right yeah. now, he has a Dolly Parton, Bill Anderson yeah. cut. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> uh, last year was a Willie Nelson, Barbara Streisand duet cut. So anyway, he's had songs mm. cut by everyone. So yeah. when you have that caliber of career, what happens is every single person wants to write a song with you. Right. <laughs> you can't, you know, go anywhere without someone trying to write a song with you, you know. Yeah, that's true. And so, but with he and I, he kept saying, Tess... I know you're a songwriter. Like, I just, I know it. I know it when you, you talk, you say certain things. He said, I know you're a songwriter. Just write a song with me. Mm. And I was so intimidated. And I was like, well, I, I just don't know. And and then one time we were having a very deep conversation and he literally turned it into a song. Yeah. <laughs> Songwriters said, will do that. <laughs> and he said, see, you're a songwriter. Now let's write a song. And he oh, talked me that. into it. And then yeah. once I did it, it was very natural and, and I loved it. But there was really a block there for me. I That's felt really, so intimidated yeah. by it. So yeah. he helped. To overcome that block. He did. And those were good songwriters to do that. They'll pull it out of you. That's right. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and there's another thing, you know, we've talked about this in the past, in uh, especially here in Nashville, it's about co-writing. Yeah. Very few just write by themselves. That's true. You know, in yeah. fact, publishers look at that. Who are you writing with? That's true. Who, who are you writing with today? Yeah. So. Uh, Isn't that interesting? I, yeah. I want to say yeah. maybe it was around the 90s that that really changed and started becoming like that. Yeah. Because at first, you know, for so many years, it was not like that. But mm-hmm. now it's all about the co-writing. Right. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Hard to believe. So it, let's take us in that room. Did you did you finish writing that song in the studio at Muscle Shoals? Yes. Okay. Yes. How long did it take? Oh, great question. Not very long. No? No, not Sometimes very when you're long. on a roll, it happens fast. Huh? Yeah, that one happened pretty fast. Mm-hmm. I've, now, I've written some faster ones with Bobby, but uh-huh. what was interesting with this one was... I really had a very specific vision for what I wanted it to be. Uh-huh. You know, it's talking about two people. How much of the song did Dottie leave behind? Um, well, the title she had, title. the main hook, um, and a couple, maybe two or three of the lines. Mm-hmm. It's so funny because now now I go back and I'm like, did I write that line? <laughs> you know, it's so... Um, but what was interesting about this was I had a very specific vision that I wanted the story to be... Mm-hmm. Two people, you know, in this relationship that's not working out, but they're not bad people. There's no real villain here. Mm -hmm. It's just that they're wrong for each other. And I thought it was really important um, to keep that the storyline. And what was really interesting, Billy Lawson, he's written some, oh gosh, he's had some amazing Leanne Womack cuts and a number one um, with Trace Adkins. 
And he's such a great writer, but yeah. he kept being so tempted to throw the man under the bus in this song. <laughs> Pick the man, the villain. Yes. He, and he had some great lines for it. And I had to really, you know, fight him on it and say, no, 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 nobody's really bad here. You know, mm-hmm. like there doesn't have to be a villain for there to be heartbreak. And that's the story. Well, we got to stick to it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Find the direction and then yeah. stick to it. And sometimes yeah. there's great lines that you just got to leave out. I know. You know. Just leave them for another song. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the only save them for another song. So with that in mind, the story behind this song, folks, go back now on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Go back. Mm-hmm. Listen to the wrong one once again mm-hmm. in a whole new light. Yeah. And while you do that, we're going to take a little break. Be okay. right back. You're listening to the Songwriter Connection. Connecting with music makers and hearing their songs and stories. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. We are in the presence of uh, country royalty. We have Tess Frizzell as our guest today. Tess, just a pleasure to have you. You um, you grew up in the music business. So, I mean, you grew up on tour buses. Oh, yes. And, you know, I, I, I saw one interview where you said, I, I thought all the kids had buses. Yeah, that's really <laughs> true. I really didn't realize till I started school that everyone didn't have a tour bus. That's really true. Yeah. What a weird childhood. But no, I literally grew up learning how to walk on the bus. Really? And Oh, yes. Yeah. Some of my first words were things that revolved around. I would come out from the back room and I would say, now, is this going to be a hotel or a motel? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if anyone's been on the road long enough, it's usually a motel. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Or the bus. You know. <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so. <laughs> Did mom used to bring you up on stage? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yes. The story is, as soon as I could crawl, I started crawling out from the side stage. <laughs> and mom and David would be doing You're the Reason God Made Oklahoma. And I would come out. And I guess about the time I was one and a half or two, I would take the mic and, no and help sing mom's part on that. And <laughs> so, yeah, those are some of my very first memories was stage. Wow. Yeah. But it's funny because, you know, and I would always ask to come out and sing that song. And then... I would come out and I would only do the very last word and say, you, and then the crowd would just go wild. <laughs> and I thought, oh man, that really probably did something to me where I thought, you know, you don't really have to do much and everyone's right. just <laughs> you know, standing over here. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, I just love the fact that uh, you carry on the tradition in, in, in your shows, you do some songs from your mom and your, oh, yes. and your grandmother as well. In fact, I was digging around and I found on YouTube over at the Nashville Palace, you did yeah. this generation show. You and your uncle David. And the thing about if you listen to this song, which I always loved, you're the reason God makes Oklahoma, Mm -hmm. made Oklahoma, but but David Frizzell sings the first verse and the the first (laughs) chorus, and then Shelly comes in in the second. But I found this, and I love it because you're singing your mom's part. Yeah. And this this video starts with the second verse. So let's play a little bit of this. Okay. That's you. David cheering you on, you know. How about that? Wow. (laughs) You know what's crazy? That song is such a crowd pleaser. People have not forgotten that song. It It does not matter. It really was. Mm -hmm. It does not matter what town I am in. When I do that at a show, I... At least half of the audience is singing along. It mm. blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was that started in a movie, wasn't it? Did yes. it was oh, Clint Eastwood had a lot to do with that? This is such right? a crazy story. Yeah. I know. You know, a lot of people think that Frizzell and West started just because they probably had connections to the music industry, yeah. being who they were related to. But it really wasn't that. You know, my mom got started. When she was just coming out of high school as a teenager, mm-hmm. um, and she was singing backup for my grandmother. She's on the road with Dottie. That's okay. right. My mom, my grandmother was on tour and said, "Okay, you want to be a singer? <laughs> well, come on tour with me, and you can One sing rule, backup." Right? That's right. Oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this story. But go right. ahead. Yeah, yeah. She I love said, it. "Come, come on on tour with me. I'll show you the ropes." But there's one rule: <laughs> you can't date anyone in the band. No, musicians are a big no-no. <laughs> no. No. 
<laughs> so, we always know. get a bad rap. Why is that? <laughs> I, know. Yeah. I know. So naturally, my dad was the band leader <laughs> and the guitar player. <laughs> you know, That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. Uh, he was. He was the guitar player, and one day my grandmother showed up to leave town on the tour bus and was minus one guitar player and one daughter. <laughs> oh, no. But, and yes. there's the other reason why you do it. Yes. Because <laughs> you start losing band members. That's the, right. That's yeah. true. She lost two in one in one day. In, in you know? one day. Yeah, and they took off and went west and uh, were in California, tipped in California, met up with Uncle David, mm-hmm. and... Started had a nightclub there, and they huh. played for a few years. But what's interesting that a lot of people don't know is it wasn't like when they went out there, Mom and David started a duet and worked for a few years. No, no Mom did there. her part of the show, and then David would come on later in the night. Wow. And uh, they never really sang together huh. until David's recording some songs. You know, he's trying to make it in his own way in the music business, and and he had been on tour with Lefty. He'd been around a while, but mm-hmm. he was trying to make it. And he puts down some songs. And on Oklahoma, it was just the idea to put mom on the song. Hmm. And they pitched that thing all around. And it was a big rejected no from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. Everyone said no to it until Snuffy Garrett, who, you know, he heard this and was like, this is the most brilliant thing ever. You got Lefty's brother. You got Dottie's daughter. On this song, he plays it for Clint Eastwood. Mm, wow. And Clint falls in love with it. He said, that is a monster hit. Wow. He said, I love it so much. You know, um, he was right. I'm going to make a music label. I want it in my movie. And wow. he puts it in his movie. And all of a sudden, they're a huge hit. And uh, that's how they got started. Do you remember? I was trying to remember the name of the movie the other day. Um, was it? Uh, any Which, any which way, way You Can. Okay. Or, yes. Any which way you can. I can't remember. Not, it was the first no, one. I know. Second. It was the first one. It was, <laughs> it was the first, the first one. one. Yeah. I know. Okay. Get this, yeah. I get this. Any which way but lose. It was, it was the. It was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, Great and, films, uh, by the way. Great I films. I know. Yeah. I know. It's so funny because if I'm ever on the road in a hotel and I just turn the TV on, that movie is on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you got to sit and watch it. I know. And I'm like, oh, well, I got to watch yeah. their part. <laughs> Same for me. If I turn yes. the TV and it's Andy Griffin or something, I got to watch it. Come on, you know. Oh, but, but yeah. I know as you feel. Yeah, good yeah. old Clint Eastwood. So He's Clint. really the one that that got him started. And then he started spreading the radio. And oh just, yeah, bam! It just took off, off like wildfire. Awesome, really, yeah, awesome stuff. What's your mom do these days? Is she does oh, she do any singing? She is retired. You know, yeah. she does not sing now. I know that you you have your NSAI connection. So yeah, so I think the last time she performed was I guess it was a few years ago now when they had the top fifty. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it top hundred songs or top fifty? I think that they do, and um, and and that you're the reason God made Oklahoma was one of them. And so her and David did awesome. that together, and everyone loved it because it's so rare yeah. that they do it. But no, she's retired, and you know what's so funny is that things just always come full circle. It is the wildest thing, life, you mm-hmm. know, and how they it come is. full circle. It's it just, really is. It really is bizarre, and so for mom. What's been so wild is, you know, she was always the daughter mm-hmm. and and doing this whole music business thing as the daughter. And now it's this weird twist where she's the mother. <laughs> and so, you know, with this song, it's been so fun and also okay. funny. She she's so, so proud. proud. She's, she has to be. She is so proud. I really think she is my number one fan. And awesome. it, is, it has been so funny because, you know, sometimes she will text me the funniest things you know before the song released it released she sent me a text a very long text about how proud she was how much she loves the song and she mm. believes in it and happy release day and all this stuff and i had to say well you're two days early <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's not today <laughs> and then she sends me this other uh, text you know it made the world premiere on wsm and i got nice. to go talk with bill cody and that, that was a full circle moment because actually in my baby book it says the first time i ever crawled was at wsm radio <laughs> really yeah when mom How was on that? and so so i'm there you know premiering my song which is so crazy and and then in the next week she sends me text and she says you know I've been anonymously calling WSM and requesting your song. And I thought, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you are not anonymous. I know they know it's you. They know it's you, Mom. <laughs> they know it's you. It's not me. 
<laughs> I swear it's not me, but you play oh my daughter's songs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so it's been funny. fun. Well, that's fantastic. And did you always know from back when, when you were very little, yeah. um, riding around that bus, did yes. you know you wanted to be a singer? Oh, I did. I yeah. would always tell people that I was either going to be a singer or a ballerina. Ballerina. <laughs> I know. I was going to be a baseball star. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. funny? I know, yeah. yeah. And then I grew up to be very short. And usually ballerinas are very tall. And, That's the other thing I like about and, you. We're both short. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that just didn't pan out. I'm a short girl. <laughs> really, it's the truth. <laughs> um, but no, I just really always thought that that's what I would do. Yeah. That's good. And you went to Belmont University. That's true. Because your folks said, like Allie, who was here uh, not too long, Allie Colleen, her yeah. mom and dad said, I don't care whatever you do, you're going to get your education oh, first. Oh, yes. That yeah. was exactly what I was told. Mom, mm-hmm. I think mom was just maybe trying to put off me doing music for a few years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, she was like, you yeah. have to go to college. And I was like, okay. And, you know, it was it was a lot of money and it was... Um, yeah. yeah. I, you know, with creative writing. Oh, absolutely. A great Belmont's college. One of the best. Yes. If I had to, to do all over again. I'd, I'd have gone to Belmont. I'm not trying to report it, but yeah, I'd, I'd well, it Belmont. was, <laughs> it yeah. was definitely a great college and I loved writing. I absolutely loved it. You know, Always? and yeah. yes. And, um, but I do remember, you know, she was like, you have to go to college. And then I went and I picked creative writing and I thought, this you really don't usually do a whole lot with this. <laughs> this is just costing us a lot of money. Did you take songwriting classes? Because they've got a great I, music. Program. I know yeah. I didn't. It was so funny. I almost because well, you know it's such a like number one music college. Really, sure. I almost did that. Yeah, and then I didn't, and I went with creative writing. It was really writing. interesting. Um, mm-hmm. but I loved it. Yeah, I bet they should have given you a lot of internship. Uh, credits. For, yes. Well, you know, it's really funny. At the time, my dad, um, before he started uh, doing um, Christian country music, he actually, at the time I was at Belmont, had mm-hmm. an office on Music Row and he was producing. And so in between classes, I would go over to his studio and I would sing demos and stuff. And, nice. And I would say, Dad, you got to, um, you know, write this off like this is an internship. Yeah. <laughs> for me. We got to work this out somehow. <laughs> And did he? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I don't even remember. Now it's been a while, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that is a valuable experience. Yes. You did demos. You're a demo singer. I know. Do you still do some of that? Yeah, probably don't. Uh, you no, I don't do demos. But that was definitely how I learned. You know, studio. That was really how I learned how to do studio. It's studio is so different than live performing it and is. stuff. Oh, it, it yes. It really is. You don't realize. Oh, but no. It's a totally different ball game. Yeah. So. Sometimes it's a lot of takes to get it oh, right. Oh, yes. And then and then if it's you and your dad, it's it's <laughs> it's really interesting. Because then I'm imagine. like, <laughs> and I'm so sensitive. And so is he. Yeah. And he, what a great producer, really. He, oh, um, But, you know, then he would say, okay, I think you can do that one again. And then I'd be like. Well, oh, that really hurts my feelings. <laughs> I thought that was great. I know. You could do better. I know. Oh, <sighs> unbelievable. Wow. What's next for you? Oh, gosh. Well, I have just enjoyed the release of this song so much. It has been so just amazing. I don't even know if I can really put into words how special it has been, you know, when I get to have people who have been in my life since the beginning, like Jeannie Seeley, then mm. listen to my song and so give me her. real true feedback that they really love it. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's so wild because it's such a different, um, you know, um, experience than, Oh, this is just a family friend I've had forever. It's like a peer yeah. and, and that's really giving you, um, that they're really proud of what you're doing. And so that's been so amazing, but Really, my goal now is to finish a whole album, yeah. head back to Muscle Shoals, and finish Wonderful. up writing some more songs. And wow. That's that's great. So you're working on a project now? Are you yeah. writing? You're yep. writing for the project? Oh, yes. Bobby helping you a little oh, bit? Oh, <laughs> yes. We wrote a great one the other day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know it right away as it's happening. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, and it's funny, too, because the other day he had this idea... And I'm so honest, like very honest. It's so funny that I was intimidated at first. And then when he and I got in the room, he was like, you are not intimidated anymore. Because I'm like, no, this is a better line. (laughs) (laughs) And um, so I'm always very honest. And um, the other day he came to me with an idea. He was like, this really could be an idea for the next song, you know, maybe for the album. And 
I said, no, no. And he said, are you sure? He said, I hate, I'll just take it to a songwriting appointment, but are you really sure? And I said, no, that idea is not for me. And then I said, but you know what? That melody is so, I'm like in love with that melody. Before I knew it, we sat down and wrote that song. Wow. That (laughs) same idea too? Yes. Yeah. Well, we changed some of the idea to Mm. where I I was really sold on it. But Mm. um, usually I know whether or not I love it or not. But that time... I really thought it was a no for me, and then the melody just hooked me, and before I knew it, we had that song written. <laughs> now, did you come up with a different twist on yes. the idea? Yes, Okay, so sometimes yes. that helps, too. Yeah, right. right. So, well, that's interesting. Very cool. That's, I love these little songwriter kind of, you know, what it's all about. That's what this show is yes. all, all about. Yeah. So. Well, I hope you continue writing, and I want to hear the next song, and I hope it's in the, the whole next album. I, I can't wait. Oh, well, thank so, you. Yeah, and I can't thank you enough for being on our show. Oh, well, thank you for having me. This was I fun. Love, I love the stories. And I know. It's so good to meet and you. And a little dive into a songwriter's mind. I hope everyone's okay out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After hearing all this. <laughs> Keep on writing. Absolutely. Um, take one of those tours for Mark Allen when you come into town. Hey, coming up on the show... Um, here in uh, weeks uh, to come, we'll get uh, Kent Blasey, Hall of Fame songwriter, coming back. He's got a new project that we'll talk about. I'm going to do our first ever crossover event, which is, I think that's what we'll call it, because uh, Chad Wilson, who's a great songwriter in this town, also has a podcast called Deconstructed. So we're going to do one together around this dining room table. <laughs> He's going to interview me. I'm going to interview you. I've never done that before because I don't want you. I didn't never wanted to bore you with what I'm doing. Um, but Chad's an interesting guy, so it'd be interesting to, to listen for that. We've got Will Nance coming up. Will Nance, um, end of September. Will's been a good buddy. He's had so many big hits, a couple of big ones for uh, George Strait. And um, he wrote uh, um, that big song for Brad Paisley, uh, She's Everything to Me. And Chuck Jones is coming up, who's another great songwriter. Just so happy to have him come, too. So, uh, hey, future episodes, we hope that you'll be around your dining room table uh, and, and share the stories uh, that you love about songs that you know. So thanks for joining us in the Songwriter Connection podcast. Tess, thank you again. Thank I you. I really enjoyed meeting you. Oh, thanks for having all, me. All the best to you. Thank you for listening to the Songwriter Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Songwriter Connection. Also listen to Dave Lanahan's Nashville Connections radio show. It streams live every Friday morning on WOBL and WNOI. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. See you next time on Songwriter Connection.